Welcome to a very special video today and I know you all love and are always interested in price action videos. So today we're going to do an advanced price action video and we're going to focus on crowd psychology and how to read that from the charts, which is very interesting and it's very important because the goal of this is that we want to understand how other traders think, trade and manage their positions. So where do they get in? Where do they get out? Where do they feel pain in their positions? Where do you feel greed in a position? And that is all very, very important. And to understand that on a chart, we're going to look at different concepts, trend maturity, trend context, exhaustion, profit taking, momentum distributions, fake out and weaknesses. And there are a few questions that I always like to ask myself when I look at a chart. First, how long has the trend that we are looking at been going on? Is the trend just getting started? Is it still very young or is it mature? Has it already been going on for a while? And then how is the market trading around new highs and new lows? In an uptrend, is the market easily able to push through a new high or a new low? Or do we already see signs of weaknesses? And then we can ask, is the weakness likely to be caused by profit taking? So are there traders who are taking profits? And that is a very, very important question to ask because that will help us understand is a trend likely to keep going or are we looking at a potential trend reversal? And those are very, very important things that will help us trade much better. So let's start with our first chart study. And what are we seeing here? Clearly, the market has been going higher, right? And what do we see? We are making higher highs and higher lows, the bullish trend waves. Here you can see like this one or here the bullish phases are much longer and stronger also than the bearish phases, which are very short or sideways. So we are clearly in an uptrend and the uptrend has been going on for a long time. When we zoom out, we see that there is a huge resistance level here to the left. So we have to be aware of that because other traders will be aware of that. And not only other traders, if you see that there are historical levels, maybe even a big moving average like the daily 100, the daily 200, even financial media, TV, newspapers will talk about it and therefore more traders will be aware of that. So this is very, very important. If there is something that other traders are looking at, especially if it's something that is very objective, like historic highs and lows or an important moving average, that is something that you have to note. However, just because the market is at a historic high or previous resistance level, it doesn't automatically mean we are going to go short. We just going to be very, very careful and observe the price action slowly because if we want to go short, we have to see signs of exhaustion first. We want to see signs that the people who bought this market up, who are sitting on profits, are taking profits. And we want to see signs of weaknesses because that is very important. And so when we look at trends and momentum and the buyers and the sellers, the price moves higher on your chart when there are more buyers than sellers. That's clear, right? They have to be more buyers than sellers and then the price will move higher. And the greater the imbalance, the more buyers you have compared to sellers, the stronger the move. So if you have a very strong imbalance, a lot of buyers but almost no sellers, then the market will move very, very strongly in a short amount of time. And then what happens as a trend matures, as the price keeps moving higher and higher, more traders will have unrealized profits, right? So looking back here, if you maybe bought down here or maybe you bought here in the next rally, then as a trend moves higher, you have profits, right? That are in your broker. They're not realized. You still see your daily P&L go up and down as the market matures and as the trend goes on, but you are sitting on unrealized profits. And the higher the market goes, the higher your amount of unrealized profits. That's very, very important to understand. And it's a very important concept to keep in mind. You're not only looking at abstract candles here. There are people and investors and governments and central banks and banks buying and selling assets on uh, that you're looking at on your chart. So there's way more going on than just the candle that you see on your price chart. And it's always interesting to ask yourself, do we have a lot of traders who probably sit on a lot of unrealized profits right now? Yes, probably, because the market has been going higher. And it had to go higher because there were more buyers than sellers. And all of those buyers have now a lot of unrealized profits. So as a trend matures and as a trend keeps going and going, the more unrealized profits there are, it will also make profit taking more likely. Because obviously, the more profits someone has, 
the more he's probably going to be on the on the finger with the mouse on the exit button on ready to close the position maybe they have their target somewhere up there so as we move higher the likelihood of the traders to start thinking about profit taking increases and then once you see the first signs of weaknesses that's often going to lead to a domino effect because then often the fear and the panic panic sets in and we can see that from the price action so we're zooming in a little bit here on the last part and what we see is that we are we have the last high here then we have a little bit of a dip and the market is back at the highs so this is not exhaustion yet we have a very strong breakout candle and then the next candle is just more of a neutral doji right so no signs of weakness so we have to wait a little bit longer the profit taking looks very different on your charts and the panic especially this is what you have been waiting for we want to see the market move higher get above the previous high and then fall back and we have to fall back with a lot of momentum that is the key we want to see a sudden increase in selling activity and we want to see the selling activity increase at a previous high in a mature uptrend and what happens now think about it think about you if you have been maybe long up to uh, here on the way up and then you are hoping for a continuation right and here on the green candle first of all you look quite confident that the continuation is going to happen but then the doji is going to make you a little bit worried maybe not 100 percent enough yet to close the position but you maybe start doubting your position then the next candle that's where you're going to be a little bit more nervous and more traders are probably going to think about profit taking you're maybe long from somewhere down here and you have a good amount of profits and now you can see overnight from this candle to this candle a lot of your unrealized profits evaporated and you see this huge candle with a fake out the market tried to move higher but got taken out we moved lower and that is very very important and this is where suddenly you're going to see panic selling come in because as the market moves lower and is not able to break higher more people are going to see that and they're going to be scared and then they're going to what they're going to think they're going to think that if i don't exit now then I will give back maybe even more of my profits and then will I, I will have left maybe nothing or just maybe a fraction of what I previously had in my broker account. So then this is where often the panic selling comes in. And this is then where the domino effect comes in, where suddenly traders shift from greed that they want to continue the way up here, just they want to see the trend continuation and it shifts towards, uh, towards fear, from greed to fear. And the fear now drives the market or drives the people to close their position. And that is very important. We can zoom in and we go to a lower time frame. And the momentum flush, the profit taking is very, very obvious on a lower time frame because those candles really stand out. And you can see suddenly we have huge red candles at a previous high, which we have not seen before. You can see we look left and at no point in time did we have so much selling going on so the selling flush the profit taking is very very obvious on our chart if it occurs in the right context the context keep in mind long uptrend and we are at a previous high and at a previous historic high so there's a lot of things coming together here then you can see what happens afterwards after the momentum flush here we come back and retest the previous low so you can see previous support is now maybe turning into resistance and that's going to be probably the last straw for a lot of those buyers. Maybe the buyers who did not get out here, they look at this and think, okay, that doesn't look too bad, right? As long as we get above this resistance level, we have a good chance to resume the, the uptrend. But what happens is if we don't get above this, then probably you're going to see more of this panic selling and we can zoom in on this one here right we can zoom on this one and you can see we have the same pattern just what we had when we zoom in here we saw this pattern the double top with a fake out you can see we have here now the double top with a fake out as well but on a very very low time frame we have the support level and then we break here lower and that's then the final piece and this is usually where you then see the trend accelerate to the downside when the market is not able to get above the resistance here that i've shown you then that's where probably most of the traders 
who were previously not 100% certain whether this is really going to be a short reversal. Now the panic will really kick in even for the last trader and then you can see this is then becoming a mix of profit taking and new sellers. And the great thing about trying to trade such a trading strategy is that at those turning points when a market rolls over and starts a new trend direction then you will often have big big trending pushes, very strong moves in a short amount of time and you could potentially have a very large reward to risk ratio with those types of trading strategies. And one thing that is very important to understand is that the buyers will become sellers in such a situation. So when we looked at the previous trend, we had a lot of buyers, right? The, the buyers got in because they believed the market went up and it did went up because there were too many buyers or there were not too many, but many buyers. But when those buyers, they want to exit their trade, they have to sell their position. So those buyers will become sellers. And what also happens is that when the price goes higher and higher and higher, then it will suddenly become very attractive for new sellers as well, right? If something goes up, it makes a lot more sense to sell it, right? Because historically, maybe this is a very high price. We haven't seen such a high price and that makes a uh, more downside to come more likely. So more sellers will come in. And that's really, really important. As a trend moves higher, we have those buyers who are gonna take profit at some point. And because the price is so high, we have new sellers. So we have double the selling pressure. The buyers who want to exit their trades are becoming sellers and new sellers are coming in. And that's why you will often see, first of all, the strong flush here on the profit taking. And then the new trends unfold very, very strongly in a short amount of time. And I have a few more examples. And especially in stocks, we can find this pattern quite a bit. So this is the S&P. This is the 2008 chart. But I have seen this pattern in uh, 2020, 2015, but you can go all the way back to 1920s and most of the stock market crashes or at least whenever the market had a very significant bearish reaction, you will find this pattern. What do we have with the pattern? First of all, we have a long uptrend, right? That's good. We have a mature trend and the longer the trend has been going on, the more profit taking is likely. Then we have the double top here. The market tried to push higher, but it failed. And when, when this is visible on your charts, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have a lot of buyers who are sitting on profits, unrealized profits, now starting to worry about their, their trade because this doesn't look good for a buying opportunity. This doesn't look good if you are betting on more bullishness. This feels a little bit like a double top, right? And then you can see suddenly those buyers who are sitting on their profits are probably going to take profits and that's going to increase here the, the downside pressure, a lot of selling. And then we have lower highs here. You can see we have lower highs coming afterwards. We have a support turns into a resistance. So suddenly the market is not able to break above those important barriers, which it was in the past was very easy for the market to break uh, above a resistance level. Now not. And we have short momentum. You can see we have strong and long selling sequences. After the double top, even here when we had a short sell off, but after the double top, here on the next lower high, and then here potentially if we see that more selling, that's gonna seal the deal. You can, we have, you can see here, we have retest momentum and we have the sell off momentum after the double top. Especially those momentum periods after you see a fake out or a double top, you have to be aware of them because that's often the sign that you have profit taking, especially if you're coming from a long mature uptrend. And then you can see this is the double effect that I was talking about. First of all, we have profit taking of the buyers, which is short pressure, but we also have new sellers who are coming in who are seeing this pattern. This is what you would call a dead cat bounce pattern. And you can Google for that and you will find that this is how it looks. It doesn't have to be a double top, but what is typical about a dead cat bounce pattern is that you have a lower high after an uptrend and then you have the sell off. This is a very, very profitable pattern. You will find this especially on stocks very, very often. And this pattern has been working for the last 100 years. You will find this even if you go back 100 years. 
This is the current S&P chart. You can see 2022. This is where we were. And what you can see, we had also, well, first of all, a major uptrend. Then we had here a failed continuation. Then this is the key. We have the momentum flush, right? Profit taking and probably a lot of sellers who are trading the breakout, which also happened here, by the way. We had the double top with the doji. And then you can see suddenly strong, strong selling coming into the market. This is panic selling. You can see that. During an uptrend, the price moves moderately up, but during a downtrend, the profit taking and the selling is really accelerating this effect. And that's the key here. We want to look for and we really want to see those momentum flushes, those huge momentum candles coming in. Then we want to see the market making lower high. If previous supports turns into resistance, that's the key. And you can even add a FIB from here to here. We have a 38.2 FIB. And you can see we have the momentum retest candle and then afterwards the market really collapsed. So this is the current chart, um, or at least in the beginning of the year. But again, we have the dead cat bounce. We have a mature trend, double top fake out, strong selling flush, lower highs, and then afterwards the market collapse. And you will find this pattern on the S&P or on any other indice for uh, decades and decades in the past. Another example, and you can use this checklist. Yes, we have a mature trend. You can see the market has been going higher for a while. We have a multi top. So we have this resistance level that the market was not able to break through. We have equal highs and we have deceleration. The candles are getting smaller and smaller. So loss of momentum. And all of this is going to start cause a lot of doubts for the buyers. Everybody who bought this market up is probably now going to wonder, does it make sense to stick to the long or is there a good chance that we're going to see a reversal? I would say right now, as long as the market is in this triangle, it's maybe 50-50. So especially the prof uh, professional traders are um, not going to start doubting their position as long as you are in the range. But as soon as we see a little bit more profit taking here, or at least more downside pressure, then this effect will be exaggerated. And this is where we have the first sign of uh, momentum here on the short side, right? You can see we suddenly have a strong period of selling. We break through a low after the failed breakout and we get out of the pattern. So at this point, it will be very clear that we are suddenly seeing bearish pressure. And so everyone, or not everyone, but many traders who bought this up, who suddenly see that their profits are shrinking, are going to worry. And the more they worry, the more fear is kicking in, the more they are likely to take profits. And the more traders that are taking profits here, the more pressure we have on the downside. And you can see we have here our first price hurdle, the weekly pivot. We break and retest it very easily. And then we move into the next consolidation. So this is a very, very important pattern to understand. We want to see, or we can always use this checklist. We want to see a mature trend. The longer the trend has been going on, the better, because that means more traders have more profits. And then once you see signs of weakness and you see the momentum kicking in, that's really where you want to pay attention to because that's such an important piece of information. Another example, we have a downtrend here, right? And we don't want to fight the trends just because the market has been going down for a long time. It doesn't mean we automatically going to go long. We need to see signs that the powers are shifting. That's very, very important. Otherwise, what happens is that you see a downtrend, you automatically go long, and that will not work over the long term. We have to see clear signs that the powers are shifting. So for that, we could use a, a pivot point. Maybe we could also use support and resistance levels. We see the double bottom that the market struggled with. We see previous support turning into resistance. And then again, on the breakout, it's becoming support potentially. And that's the first sign of power shifting. Once you see that the market is breaking previous support resistance and not able to continue lower, that's a first sign that something is changing here. And you see a little bit more bullish pressure. Then you can see on the retest, we have a lot more bullish pressure. So here we can see we have probably a lot of momentum kicking in. Traders who previously sold this market, who were sitting on a lot of unrealized profits are going to see that. They're going to see the pivot here that is being retested as support which is not a very bearish signal. It's quite a bullish signal. And at this point, more and more traders who, are, who were short are probably going to start thinking about um, at least exiting their trade, but it's still going to contribute to more bullish pressure. And then you can see we really explode here. The first trending phase after the turnaround is very strong. That's where usually the profit taking and the new sellers are overlapping. And then you can see the new trend unfolds. 
until here we have a power shift, we had a failed breakout, we make a previous um, or we break a previous support, turns into resistance, turns the also the pivot into resistance, and now we are looking at a potential downtrend. We have a lot of um, selling pressure here. You can see long and strong bearish candles that's pointing us towards profit taking or maybe even new sellers coming in. So I hope you learned something. And I think the message is after this video quite clear. What we want to do is we want to see a long and a strong mature trend. We want to look for signs of weakness. Once we see weakness, we want to look for momentum kicking in, the momentum into the opposite direction of the trend that was previously going on. And that is then often a good sign that we're looking at very, very strong market forces at play that could lead to a very quick and very strong trend reversal. I hope you like this video. It's a little bit different from what I've been talking about in the past, but let me know what you think and maybe we can continue this discussion in another video.